Hey y'all, today it is gonna be another day of garden maintenance. This series has been super popular, so I appreciate all y'all's feedback on that. It just shows you some of the smaller things in the background that you don't typically get to see and kind of puts several different um, tasks into one video instead of one video for each individual task, which gets a little fussy. <laughs> So, but today we are doing several different things. One of the first big things we're doing is all the shade cloths are coming down. We are finally through the crazy time that is the summer in North Texas. And we're expecting tons of rain starting tomorrow. Very exciting, much cooler temps. These shade cloths were only up because of really long extended periods of time with triple digits. So basically everything was just baking, like cooking. And so while we will um, run into some high temps as we continue on through the rest of August into September, it won't be extended amounts of time. So time for all of those to come down, which is really exciting. They were very successful. I loved them very much and they were very helpful. Um, I'm also going to be doing some iron, um, adding some iron supplements to a couple of different plants. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit of pruning. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to be showing you how I apply fish emulsion fertilizer to my plants as well. All right, y'all, I'm excited. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know my latest videos are up. And always leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know if you have any ideas for future videos. I really like hearing from all of y'all. Okay, so I installed these uh, shade structures in July. I've got one over each bed. They held up pretty well. They were installed with uh, just T-post right here. And then the shade cloth was purchased off of Amazon. And then I did zip ties and they did really good to start bringing back some of my um, plants. A lot of my plants started flowering again and just started doing so much better. So let's go ahead and get these off. And I'm kind of excited because <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen my yard without them. Okay, it's been a minute since I've seen my gardens without the shade cloth on them. It's like I got a lot of like nut sedge in some areas. So definitely need to go through and even with the shade cloth, I mean, obviously it's very protective, but it was really hard to see what was going on with everything. So it looks like I have a lot of snapdragons that need to be trimmed up. So I'll probably go ahead and knock that out real well. Um, corn. Looks like it's doing real good. I'll probably do a lot better now that it doesn't have the shade cloth in the way. Um, but yeah, these are all the corn seedlings that I just recently planted and they're looking glorious. 
Uh, basil's looking great. I'm still in love with this cardinal basil. If y'all haven't grown it, I highly suggest it. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how massive those basil plants are? I'm not doing anything special. It's that cardinal basil. Cardinal basil, just really, really tall, getting consistent water, and I'm, it's getting fed maybe once a month with a fish emulsion fertilizer. So here you, over here, you can see more of a cluster. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. All right, let's look at the other side. Y'all probably saw the video where I added a bunch of seedlings into this bed. All of the marigold seedlings are going really well. I've been actually fairly consistent with treating them for spider mites. I'm going to keep that up right there. I also have planted a whole bunch of zinnia seedlings. You can already see I've got some starting to bloom. I think that is double pink enchantress, purple enchantress. I can't remember. Everything's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. It's about time for some of them to be staked, it looks like. Tonghong chrysanthemums back there, they're doing okay. Here's all that feather top grass I planted. Everything looking really good. These are the queen lime orange zinnias. Super pretty. Got some straw flower coming along. Straw flowers kind of struggled for me this year because it keeps getting um, mealy bugs. You can see down there. I've got some more of the winged everlasting coming up. I lost a couple of the plants, just like this one, to mealy bugs. This guy's gonna actually come up. See them all on there. It's rough. So get rid of that. Let me toss that while I'm at it. I've been trying to be more diligent about tossing my plants into my rubbish bin. Um, instead of tossing them on the ground, Especially if I'm trying to get rid of pests, it really defeats the purpose when I just throw it on the ground, which has been a bad habit. Looks like we might have some buds forming up on the cosmos. Um, old stock. I'm just shocked how well the stock did during the summer. I have a lot of stock growing. I do have some green dragon crests coming up in some places. I do want to fill in this area right here with some fennel seedlings that I have so I'll maybe do, do that. I need a little trimming on the dianthus um, carnations. They're pretty though. I don't think I'm going to grow them next year. However, I'm just not into it. I'm not into their look. Got a lot of um, queen lime red coming up. Bumblebee said, that's mine. He's having a good day. <laughs> and I do need to do some pruning back over here on some more zinnias. Zinnia garden is just happy as can be. If you recall, I also filled in with uh, several more varieties of zinnias back in here. They're all doing beautifully. If you remember, I put wherever there was a drip line, like a drip emitter right there, that's where I put a seedling. So they are pretty well spread out. However, they're all adequately watered, which is good. Definitely need to do some pruning over here. This has been happening a lot with my white zinnias this year. They've been opening up and brown and mushy and nasty on the inside. I'm not sure what's going on. So I'll have to be on top of that. But let's knock out a little bit of pruning um, before we get to some other stuff.
Okay, next I'm going to be applying Dr. Iron. Um, I get this from my local nursery Covington's, and it is not inexpensive. It is a fairly expensive product. Basically, it's going to add iron to the soil to help out some of my plants that have chlorosis. So today I'm going to be applying that and I'm not going to be watering it in as usual. Typically I would water it in, but we are expecting three to six inches of rain starting tomorrow. So I'm going to let nature, mother nature do the work for me and water it in for me. So let's go over Dr. Iron. Okay. Here is Dr. Iron. It corrects iron deficiency, yellowing of lawns and plants. So let's talk about what that looks like. One of my best examples of what that looks like are my hypericum berries back here. They have some severe chlorosis. And you can tell because the veining is green and the rest of the uh, leaf is yellow. Um, so I've definitely battled with this and I haven't really taken the time to treat it very often. So the leaves really should be like, you know, a deep green like that. So that is definitely an area that is seriously struggling. I don't know if I have any more chlorosis issues back here but I do have some more in the front but anyway I'm going to go ahead and get that applied so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um follow their directions and they do have directions on the back so basically um we're going to put this two teaspoons, four teaspoons, whatever, depending on potted plants, trees and shrubs, half a cup to a cup. I'm gonna do start with half a cup on uh, these uh, two plants back there. So I'm gonna sprinkle it around the bottom and I am gonna be guesstimating. I'm not getting out an actual measuring, whatever. I'm just gonna guesstimate half a cup, pour it around the bottom and go ahead and let mother nature water it all in for me. So let's knock that out real quick. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys my um, bi-monthly or monthly method for fertilizing. I use a fish fertilizer concentrate. Um, doesn't burn plants, which is super important. And it smells not great, but this stuff is amazing. And I use an old school miracle Grow um, sprayer. I've had this for years upon years. You can see how worn out it is. I don't actually use miracle Grow, but um, the sprayer works really good. So basically what I do is I um, put the fertilizer in here. I typically will fill it um, for maybe about half an inch at the bottom. And it's a concentrate and then I will add water from there and shake it up really good and then attach it. And this will usually get me about 20 linear feet of garden space. And that's like 20 feet by about six feet deep. So um, multiplying that out 180 or 120 square feet, is that right? 20 times six, I think so. I'm not good at that stuff, you guys. 120 square feet, uh, uh, 120 square feet of surface, and then I'll refill and start again once the water in here looks fairly clear. So let me show you what that looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed today's maintenance video. Um, 
going over a few different things. Pruning, you know, is pretty basic. Taking down the shade cloths is very exciting, but I did want to show you guys the things like adding the fish emulsion and then also adding iron. They're actually both very easy, so don't be intimidated by them. They're things that you can do in your garden to help really boost some areas. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.